Alexia, welcome to the Hustle Hughes podcast. Hi, Afnan. I'm so excited that you're here. Yes, I'm so happy to meet you. And also being here, we are in your space right now. The right. The Airbnb queen herself. <laughs> um, so thank you for allowing us to book your space of and course. be here, you know, helping another black woman. I know that must feel great for you. It and does. you've always been really big about that from when I met you on Clubhouse. Yes. So I appreciate that all these years later that you're still open <laughs> and connected. And, and I really love that. Of course. Of course. For those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, so my name is Alexia Wright. I am known as the Airbnb queen. Um, I have built my empire here in Atlanta. So all of the units that I run are here. And um, I am in business with my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. We do um, a lot. We do Airbnb. We do property management. So we have full-blown property management, full-blown housekeeping um, we have a luxury transportation company, so mm -hmm. we have a party bus nice. and the Escalades. Um, we also have vending machines and, um, I think that's about it. Yeah. We have a restaurant that we're about to start. I haven't really told anybody yet. I was about but, to say, yeah. what? Congratulations. Thank you. So that's what we're working on next. Will that be in um, Atlanta as well? It'll be here. That'll mm -hmm. be exciting. It'll be here. That's going to be really exciting because I love cooking. So mm -hmm. I didn't really know that excited. about you. I love cooking. Like, yes. I will cook all day. Okay. I don't know why. I just love cooking. <laughs> what is your favorite dish to make? Like, what's your signature thing that you go to? Um, My go-to is probably, like, my pineapple rice bowls. Wait. Like, you're talking about the one that they get at the food festival? Yes. I'm going to okay. make you one for you, Lee. I am about to say. I got I'm, you. I'm going to need one of those. I'm going <laughs> to okay. need one of those. I got you. I'm so excited to talk with you because we met on Clubhouse. Right. And right before this interview, we had Corey here. So yes. it was kind of like a Clubhouse reunion. It is amazing. a Clubhouse reunion. Yes. Yes. And I was telling him downstairs and telling you that I'm glad that I finally got to meet you in person because yes. I didn't actually get to meet you when the pandemic was happening because right. I had just moved to Dallas before it all popped off. True. And so now here I am actually in the mix. And even though you know a lot of people, you're pretty low key. Yes. You're pretty like <laughs> out the way, but still very much about your business. Yes. And so I'm super excited to interview you because you're you're very multifaceted, right? Thank you. You are not only like young, beautiful, super connected, um, but you're also very humble and Thank you're you. really big about your family. You have a yes. beautiful blended family that you share a little bit of on online. Yes. Um, but you've also built this empire, a serial entrepreneur. Um, and so I would love for you to kind of talk to us about how you got started with your first business. Um, so my first business was on, honestly a lingerie line. Ah, I saw that on the EYL podcast. Yes. <laughs> Weren't you like a teenager? I was definitely a teenager. Okay. Um, but it wasn't like lingerie. It wasn't like. It was like sleepwear. It was sleepwear. Okay. But it was, it had some like, um, bra and penny set. So it was yeah. like a lingerie line. Yeah. Um, I had, I actually got the money from my dad to start my lingerie line. Mm -hmm. And, um, he was like, I'm not giving you no money to start a <laughs> Are your parents like strict? <laughs> no, they're not strict. One thing I can say about my parents, like growing up, they were very lenient, but I was a good kid, mm -hmm. you know, like I was a really good kid and they could trust me. Mm -hmm. um, I started driving at like 15, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm in high school. Like I was the only sophomore driving. All the other people that were driving yep. were seniors. Yep. So um, I can honestly say like my parents were. And the great thing about me is I had three parents. So mm -hmm. I had my mom mm -hmm. and then I had my dad and then mm -hmm. my mom got married. Mm -hmm. So I had a stepdad too. Oh, nice. Yeah. So luckily, like I was grateful to have three parents and my, my family was blended, you know, mm -hmm. like my stepdad and my dad were really cool. They were That's super awesome. tight. They were one day apart. Like their birthdays really? are one day apart. Yes. Yeah, so That's I amazing. was grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And the main thing like with my parents was they wanted to make sure that we were okay as children. Mm. You know, like even though I seen my mom and my dad separate after 13 years, mm. um, gr like growing up and the, the final product of that was not toxic. It was very healthy. Yeah. Um, it was a very healthy relationship. So yeah. I had, it was double trouble for me, you know, like I had three people on my neck about <laughs> getting stuff done. Yeah, yeah. So my dad gave me the money for my lingerie line. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point in time, I was still working at Chick-fil-A. So that mm -hmm. was the very first job that I had. Mm -hmm. And I worked at Chick-fil-A for six years. And along, like my last job was at Chick-fil-A, um, Atlanta Hartsfield. That is the busiest Chick-fil-A in the world. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really busy. Mm -hmm. um, so I was doing that. And at some point in time, I just quit. And I started doing real estate. How old were you when you quit? I was, what about 20? So super young. 21. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I started at, I, I started working at Chick-fil-A at 14 mm -hmm. and I quit at 20. 
Okay. I think I was going into 21. That's crazy. You had a six yeah. year career by the time you were 20. I did. <laughs> and I was consistent. Like mm-hmm. it was, I had like two other jobs and, but no, I had three other jobs in between, but I always still worked at Chick-fil-A. So, um, I worked at the Marriott before I worked at Taco Mac mm-hmm. I, and I also worked at Foot Locker. So I did have other jobs, but I never stopped working at Chick-fil-A. So you've always been a hustler, like always, always. multiple streams of income. Always. Yes. Okay. I've always been like this. I love that. Yes. And did you have like a history? Like, was it like your family? I know you had your bonus dad, right? Yes. But like, did you, did, were your parents entrepreneurs? Like, where did you get that spirit from? Honestly, my mom, she a go, she just a go-getter. Is she? Like, I always see my mom go get it, like no matter what. Mm-hmm. My dad was the same way. Mm-hmm. Like, my dad is a hustler and my stepdad is a hustler. Like, okay. I seen... I seen all three of them get up and hit the ground every day to go get it. So that was just something like I seen my mom go to work every day. She mm-hmm. wouldn't miss work for nothing. Yeah. Um, so I think that's just where I got it from. My grandma still works to this day. She's wow. um, yeah, she's an executive housekeeper at Embassy Suites. So me getting into the Airbnb industry, I learned a lot of it from her. Wow. Like I would literally when I was in college. After when I would go to her hotel and just sit all day mm-hmm. and just pick up on stuff. She would just teach me a lot of stuff about the hospitality industry, like mm-hmm. why hotels do this and when they do it. And now I still follow hotel trends, although yeah. I'm an Airbnb. They're still the same. They're yeah. both both in the same industry. So yeah. So you're not yeah. new to this game. You have Absolutely generations not. of dopeness, yeah. generations of amazing, strong, independent women. Yes. And so it only makes sense that you kind of fell into this, but you also had your own hustle. You did it your own way. Yes, absolutely. So tell me about like, what was it at 20 that made you decide, okay, Chick-fil-A is cool. I appreciate what you've given me, but it's time for me to move on into my own. Like what made you go into real estate? Well, actually Chick-fil-A fired me. Oh, really? I was over them. (laughs) I was over them. And this particular location was not the same culture as the other Chick-fil-A I worked at. It was the demographic of people that work at the airport. Mm-hmm. It's not the same. It's yeah. totally different. That makes sense. You know, like they are, um, it's just not the same. It's not the Chick-fil-A culture that you would see. You that know, like my pleasure. Attitude. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's not the same as a, a franchise location. So mm-hmm. it was, it wasn't what I was used to. Um, but at some point I was like, I am over this. Like I'm sick of working. And I always told my parents, like, I didn't want to work for nobody when yeah. I got older. And I meant that. You meant it. And Clearly. I would never work for anybody again in yeah. my whole entire, for the rest of my life. You say, I'm going to find a way to get it, but it's yeah. not going to be this way. So okay. I got into real estate with my mentor, um, Big Business, Greg Parker. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is at Big Business on Instagram. And um, I went up to Philly to take a class with him. I joined his one-on-one program, and it was just up from there. So you were doing mentorships and masterminds at 20. 20, yep, 2021. 20, That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I didn't do my first mastermind until after Clubhouse and everybody <laughs> was talking about it. So, like, I, like walk me through, what was it? Like, how did you connect with him? Like, what mm-hmm. made you? Because you're so young, but yes. very much intentional about getting to this business. So I, um, Greg had a class. In Philly, at this point in time, this was before he even... I was Greg's very first Mm one-on-one. Now Greg has over 500 one-on-ones probably, you know? He was doing like... He had built a community center in Philly Mm -hmm. because that's where he's from. And um, in North Philly. And he had like a... um, um, It was like a meet and greet on the rooftop of the community center. Very cool. And I seen him post it and I'm like, I'm going. Yeah. I booked my flight. I booked my hotel room. And I was up there. Mm -hmm. Um, From there... I joined his one-on-one there mm-hmm. um, at the mastermind. But the first time that I ever, I ever met him, I skipped. The first time I've ever met him, he actually came. He was on tour, and he actually came to Atlanta to mm. speak at the Marriott Hotel. And that is where I first met him. I sat on the first row. Mm-hmm. I had my notebook, I'm and sure I asked every question I needed <laughs> to ask, okay? So when I when he did the class in Philly, I was like, okay, I'm going up here. At this point, I'm consistent. You yeah. know? And that's something I teach today, like, if you look at any of my other interviews, any of my other podcasts, that is something that I always mention. Like, I wouldn't be here where I am if I wasn't consistent. There mm-hmm. were many times where I wanted to quit. Mm-hmm. Don't get me, don't get me wrong, don't get it twisted, you mm-hmm. know. But I think when it comes to being an entrepreneur or just succeeding in life, if yeah. you're not consistent, yeah. you don't get results. Yeah. Absolutely. And I was consistent with that. Yeah. So. I think it's incredible that you locked in at, at such a young age. And so when you met with him, you did the mastermind, yep. like to walk me through the next steps. Like, did you acquire property and Another thing too is like you did have your your parents like um you know help you with your first investment for your yep. lingerie business but like you know are you are you with, with hundreds of thousands of dollars saved at this point Oh no <laughs> or- it wasn't hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> but it was enough to buy the property Okay um so at this point in time Greg was only selling the property for 30,000 mm. So it was only 30,000 to buy the house and then 
Um, and had you saved so, that through like your side hustle? Yeah, Chick Fil A. Exactly. So, and then it was twenty thousand for construction mm, to like renovate it. Yep. Okay. So you do the rehab on the property, but that was through that was a loan. Mm. So um, I didn't have to come out of pocket for that. So you're 21. You mm-hmm. buy your first property with money that you had saved yep. over your six year career and your side hustle. Yep. Right. Like you know how like unique that is, right? <laughs> like you're just running it off like it's just. <laughs> I get that a lot, but I think because now, like you know, when you're in something, it doesn't feel like. So yeah. now people be like, "I'm so proud of you," and you're. You're so young. And I'm like, bro, I've been working for a long time. Yeah. You know, like, I don't feel, it, it doesn't feel, it's not thrilling to me because it, it's just my life. Like, yeah. I don't, um, what I get up and do every day is I don't have a choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I have to. So um, when I get those words of encouragement, I am extremely grateful for them. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of gratitude for that. Yeah. But it's really like, I don't have a choice. Like, yeah. This is this is what's at hand, and this is what I have to do every day. Yeah. You know, I love so that. I'd be like, "Why y'all proud of me? Like, I'm just running. I'm just doing my thing. Like, yeah, it's just, you know? just me. But I get it though. As an influencer, I definitely um, I understand. Yeah, and I don't really. There was not like a. I didn't have a blueprint, or mm-hmm. I didn't have a guidebook. Mm-hmm. And now, like as an entrepreneur, one thing I can say about the generation now is not the same mm-hmm. as our generation. Yeah, these kids are different. They're mm-hmm. on TikTok. They're on YouTube. Mm-hmm. These kids are. You got that. You got that other side where they making money. They making more than us. They're more than us, right? Putting us to shame. Ryan's World. My daughter watched Ryan's World. Um, Nastasha. Like all these kids making millions, millions of, dollars of dollars on crazy. YouTube. Mm-hmm. And then you got the other kids who want to shoot. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to be on. They just want to be on TikTok. And- Some of them are, are trading stocks and they're investors and everything. Like, like my little brother's thirteen. He's like, um, I said, what do you want for your birthday? He's like, I want Nike stock because uh-uh. I saw. I said, what do you know about stock? He said, I saw it on TikTok. I said, good Lord. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think it's a gift. I think that's a gift and a curse. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely, had I known the impact that I had on younger, like I had on people, me being so young, I would definitely like want to bring other young people along. Mm -hmm. I just know that the mentality that I had at that age is not normal. Girl. And it's not the same. Most people don't have it. No. You still got 30-year-olds who don't have the same mentality that I have, you know? Yeah. Did you, like, what What, what did your friend's circle look like at 20 when, you, when you're when you buying your first property? Like, what is what does everybody else do? Like, were, were they on your level? Were they moving really the have, same way? I didn't really have friends, for real. I still uh-huh. don't. I have my sisters. You know, I have my homegirls. But, like, when it comes to, like, um, just being... Just having that, I don't have a group chat. You know, like I have my sisters that I'm in a group chat with. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're my friends, but they're my sisters, you know. How many but sisters you got? Mm, it's a lot of my dad, my stepdad has seven girls. Wow. And then my dad has four. Okay, so it's a lot of y'all. It's a lot of and us. all of y'all are blended and together. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I'm the oldest of seven, and okay. um, my dad remarried, and so did my mom. We're 12 all together, and okay. we're really close too. That's so lit. I love your blended. Family. Yeah, that's yeah. lit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a lot of us. But I do like I didn't really at that age. I didn't really have like too many friends. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't. Um, I just knew. People wasn't on what I was on. Even when I was in high school, after that, like I would leave school, the bell would ring, and I'm in the bathroom changing clothes for work. What you were on another? Like level. they, they at their lockers hanging with their boyfriends. Mm-hmm. I didn't care about boys. Like I didn't <laughs> like it was girls. She I said I'm get getting it. to the bag. That's the wrong B. <laughs> Who I didn't care about boys exactly. Right. Um. That just wasn't a lot of stuff. I wasn't focused on. I was doing dual enrollment in high school, so mm, I was going to classes. Georgia State as a, as a junior. Yeah. You know, so I just kind of grew up kind of fast. Yeah. You know, you had your eye on on something different. You wanted something for yourself, and you were focused on that. Yeah. So now when people come in me, I'm like, bro, I've been grinding over ten years. Yeah, like you where know? y'all been? <laughs> you know, like this is not new to me. Yeah. They be like. How you so young and how you do this? I'm like, bro, if y'all knew me when I was 14 and 15, mm-hmm. having them in football games or, you know, because I couldn't hang out with my friends because I had to work. Like, yeah. when I was that young, my mom my mom had me, not that I had to because my parents are very well off, mm-hmm. but she had me paying my own phone bill when I got my job I and that. I had to pay the Comcast bill. Mm-hmm. So now I think that taught me a lot as an adult because I put my priorities first. Like, my mm-hmm. bills come before anything, you mm-hmm. know? So now at this point in my career, like, that's not... I don't have to be like, I got to get paid to pay my bills, but it's a prior, like I always prioritize my priorities first. Mm-hmm. You I know, I'm that. not, um, and you're confident in that. You know exactly yeah. what it is that you're doing. Exactly. I love that. Okay, yeah. cool. So you buy your first property, mm-hmm. right? Um, how did that feel? You have like the rehab and all of that. Like, what was that process like? It, uh, Greg and his team put a tenant inside and it was cool. After so long being transparent, 
um, over the time, someone did break into the house mm. and they stripped the house of everything. Wow. And it was because of the property management company that I that they had running it. They didn't know what they were doing, apparently. Mm. Um, but I've overlooked it and, you know, Greg's my brother, Nikki's my sister. So we've fixed it. And that was just a hiccup that I had mm. during the process. So it wasn't peaches and cream. You yeah. Know? And I learned my lesson. So I would never do real estate again out of my state, out of somewhere I can't put my hands on mm -hmm. if I don't have somebody s solid or, you know, um, firm who can run it for me. I yeah. would never do that because I was devastated when I seen the house mm -hmm. and how it looked after so much work was put into it. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. So I don't remember exactly like yeah. how it was, but um, it took about a year for the rehab process to be done. And once it was done, like I said, they put a tenant inside and it was smooth selling from there. Okay, cool. Like, I think it was like $1,800 in rent I was making and it, the property was free and clear. So, you know, I didn't really have any bills on it or nothing besides the bills, the power bills, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So is at this point, once you have your first property that you use with like the money that you save, that you're then taking the income from that, rolling into the next one and just kind of snowballing it? Is that kind of how you, because you have how many properties now? It's about 30. About 30. Yeah. Okay, cool. So for you, um, what were, you know, once you got your first property, what was your like plan? Like, did you know that you were going to get up to this many properties and this many businesses? Like, was this all part of your strategy or did you just kind of fall into some of it? No, I, I definitely fell into this. I did not see me being the Airbnb queen. That wasn't my. Like your vision. It wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't my vision at the time when I first Getting into the Airbnb, honestly, all I did was move out of the property, the uh, apartment that I was living in, mm -hmm. and I left the furniture and I moved to another condo, and I I just put it on Airbnb. I took pictures, I staged it for a check in, and I put it on Airbnb, mm -hmm. and it started doing numbers. Mm -hmm. So it started paying its bills and my bills in my new place, mm. and that's what like three or four months later, that's when I went and got another one. Okay, and then I I just scaled like every quarter. And they I was were, like apartments that you were renting and Correct. then putting out on Airbnb. Correct. Now, and I don't know a lot about Airbnb, so just don't mind my questions. No, but um, a lot of places don't allow you to like sublease. Correct. Right. So, do you strategically look for certain types of property? Is that like how you do it? Yeah. So now at this point, and and this is something I want to tell like the audience mm -hmm. when it comes to getting into the Airbnb industry, the best way to do it is I would say. Get your LLC and your EIN set up. Mm -hmm. Start building your Dun & Bradstreet number. That way... Wait, what's that number? Mm -hmm, that's your business credit number. So oh, us okay. as consumers have Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Yeah. Your business has Dun & Bradstreet. Mm -hmm. So that's your business credit number. Mm -hmm. So once you get your LLC and your EIN, mm -hmm. get your Dun's number, start building your business credit. Mm -hmm. And in mo it depends on like your location. But some buildings, you might they might require you to have uh, six months of Dun & Bradstreet history. Mm -hmm. Some might require you to have two years of business history. Mm -hmm. You know, so start building your business credit to where you can walk into apartments and you can do corporate leasing or do corporate housing. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is now it's under your business. Yeah. And now they know that you're operating as a rental, a rental housing company instead of just a regular tenant. Exactly, instead yeah. of just a tenant. So that is how uh, we operate now. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't the same when I started. That's yeah. not the, the route I went when I started. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And so um, talk to us about how, okay, so you, you said you had one property. That you, so you rented out your own spot, got yes. another spot. And then, you know, the Airbnb was paying for both of your bills. And then every quarter you guys scaled and you got more properties, Correct. right? When did you start getting into some of the other businesses? Um, well, When I met my boyfriend. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we met in 2019. And the next thing that we did was the vending machines. Mm -hmm. Nope, I'm lying. The next thing that we did was the luxury transportation company. So okay. we bought our Sprinter. We bought our Sprinter cash. Okay. And then we got into the vending machines. And then, uh, oh, no, the first one was, well, he started housekeeping with me. Okay. So that is where it started. Um, so he had a housekeeping company. He was working with your... Oh, girl, wait, no, he did it. Oh, y'all were... Okay. <laughs> so I was in the room one day, and at this point in time, I am just... I'm in college, F9. Mm -hmm. I was... Uh, wait, wait. You were in school during all of this? Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. I was a senior in college, yes. double major accounting and finance, and I had a minor in French. Okay. A how, hot mess. How did you have the time? <laughs> when I was a child... Okay, we're going to have to do a whole nother episode on no, your we time got management it. skills. Yes. Because 
So I'm thinking that you had just quit Chick Fil A and you're like no. just entrepreneur. So you were still going to school. I was still in college. Was that still important to you? To there, do? it was the number one thing for me. I, really? I refused to quit college. Okay. I would have quit my businesses before I quit college. Really? Absolutely. Was that something that like your parents had instilled in you, or you for yourself wanted it? Um, honestly, I felt like I had a point to prove because mm-hmm. once I got pregnant, I felt like pe- my family were was playing, uh, preying on my downfall. Ooh. And I hate to say it like that, but that's the way I felt. Like. Nobody felt, I didn't even feel like that was in my destiny, you know, but mm, apparently God did. Yeah. And I'm grateful for my daughter. Yeah. When I had my daughter, I turned into a beast. Mm-hmm. Like I turned into a complete beast. Like nothing could stop me. I was wow. unstoppable when I got pregnant. Um. So I don't like to feel, don't, don't, uh, what am I saying? Like, I ain't no underdog. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't. Don't doubt under, me. Don't doubt don't me. Don't underestimate me. Don't underestimate me. Okay. Like with nothing. Yeah. Don't do that. Okay. So. So you were slow. So you had the real estate, your first property that you owned free and clear. Correct. And then you were already in school and then you got pregnant. And yep. then, then you did Airbnb or did you do Airbnb before you got pregnant? Nope. I did Airbnb after. After. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. So I got pregnant in 2017. Okay. And I had a more in 2018. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. So at that point in time, um, I started, I used to have to. She would come to class with me. Sometimes I didn't have a babysitter. Yeah. So at this point in time, I also had became a single mom, mm-hmm. you know, and she, she used to have to come to class with me. She would, um, I would have to leave class and go take guest tissue. Like I would have to leave class to go do stuff for my units. Mm-hmm. It was a mess. And that's wow. why I speak so heavily on my automated systems now, because mm-hmm. they allowed me to gain freedom in my business. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't have that before. Yeah. I was, I was running around like a chicken. <laughs> With my head cut off before my systems were in place. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And th- but, like, can I ask you, honestly, like, mm-hmm. from a mental per- capacity, if you remember, right? Like, that sounds crazy stressful. You got a, you're a new mom. Yes. College is no joke. You're Not doing a, a double major in finance. And what was the other one? Accounting? Accounting and finance. Child, I, I don't know how you did I it. I don't know. I really, by the grace of God, I really don't know how I did it then. And I also went through postpartum really, really bad. Did you? My hair started falling out. Oh, my God. Like, I could, I got a story. That's why when people see me now, like, people don't really, I rarely talk about my story. Like, even on my interviews and my podcast, people just want to jump into, like, how I got into Airbnb. Yeah. But people don't really know my story because I don't talk about it. Yeah. Like, I don't need a pity party. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm I'm over there. And I'm over that phase. And God has blessed me. So, You've overcome it. Yeah, I've overcome it. But I, I've learned that, that that was the fuel. Like, mm-hmm. that that fueled the fire. Yeah. So um, that is, I don't really talk about it often. Like, I probably tell my story maybe twice. Yeah. And every time people hear it, they are amazed. And yeah. I have proof. I have receipts. Well, like nothing sure. I say is a lie. Like right. I have real receipts, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. So it, it feels like it was just like trial and triumph, trial and triumph. Yes. And that's slowly how you climbed your way up. For real. Wow. And so yeah. you have your daughter, right? Mm-hmm. Did how you run your business have to change when you became a mom? Honestly, because Airbnb is twenty four seven, I really didn't have a choice. Mm. I didn't have. It wasn't. I didn't have a choice. I didn't have to pick and choose when I wanted to do e-commerce or what time I wanted to hop online or Mm -hmm. these guests are checking in every day. Yeah. They're checking out every day. What you got going on. They pay their money and they want to get inside. They're tired. They got off a plane, whatever. That's what it is. Wow. So I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. I didn't have an option to to choose whether I wanted to get up. Yeah. I still had to run my business the same regardless of, of how I was as a mom. Mm -hmm. She, she rolled with me. Mm -hmm. Me, me being a mom was first though. Yeah. So I never put my child off on anybody. And my parents are very supportive. So um, anytime I needed them to get her, they would. Yeah. Um, and eventually that's when I met my boyfriend. And, mm-hmm. and that was a huge help for me. Mm-hmm. So I was saying that to say, like, at that point of time, as I'm struggling in, at this point in time, I've gradu- so I graduated. Period. Um, I, got okay. my, I got my degree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I graduated with my bachelor's from Georgia State. Mm-hmm. And July rolled around. I graduated in, de- in December mm-hmm. of 2000. Uh, 19, 18. 18. I graduated December 2018 mm-hmm. from Georgia State. 2019, July came around. And that's when, at this point of time, my assistant who I had, my property manager, she was also in college with me. Mm. And she, like I, I, I had to be lenient with her because we were both taking classes Yeah. Um. While, 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 before I graduated. Yeah. So when I did graduate, she was still in school. Mm-hmm. And it was just a mess. Like, Excuse me, like I said, I didn't have any system set up. So it was difficult for me, right? 
And at this point in time, my property manager and my housekeepers were always, they were always beefing. Mm. The property manager I had, she had a really bad attitude. Okay. <laughs> she had a very bad attitude. Mm. And at the time, I didn't have a choice but to like roll with her. She was a really great employee, but her attitude was terrible for yeah. us to be in the hospitality industry. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And her and my housekeepers would argue all the time. Mm. So at this point, this point at this day, this particular day, I've none, I'm sitting in my room. The kids playing. We watching TV. We chilling. And one of them called me crying. Oh, God. Girl, one of them called me crying. Like, um, the housekeeper called me crying. Like, uh, such and such did this. The property manager did this. And I can't deal with her anymore. And I'm done. And I'm like, look, at this point in time, I was fed up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like, I was fed up. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. Mm -hmm. That was going to be the day that I quit Airbnb. I wanted to be dead with Airbnb. Dang, it was, it was that. Cause I mean, it sounds like you've been enduring. And it like, was overwhelming. Yeah. It was so, I had endured it so much that I was really like. And you were still mentally. suffering with postpartum at this point? Yes. Well, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. It, it had eased up at this point. But by the time it did eased up, I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nothing left. I ain't got nothing. I have no more energy left. I was like, you know what? I don't, I had wow. lost my love for the business. And mm. I said that on my EYL podcast. Yeah. I really had lost my love for the business. And I didn't want to do it anymore i'm like this is too much like well, i can't do this alone dang i can't imagine how yeah. overwhelming that was very and even in this time are you still like mainly solo it's just you and your boyfriend like oh no we have a team now okay yeah we got a team now so it's it's a lot easier now of course no i mean like at that point when you were overwhelmed like was it still just you and your boyfriend doing like doing it solo or did you feel like you had a network of like friends and people supporting you or mentors? No, I was doing it on my own that's before crazy. I met him. I was doing it on my own. Like I had my employees, but that's it. I didn't have like my friends weren't like everybody was doing their own thing, you know, mm -hmm. and I had became a mom. So the friends that I did have had their own had their own families. Mm -hmm. Like my friends now are not like 26 year olds, 20, 25 year olds. They're grown. Mm -hmm. married with kids families you know yeah. um so it it wasn't it was just yeah. me then until i met him and then that's when he started the the housekeeping company because i wanted to quit yeah and he was like no you're not quitting and i was he like said wait let go of this wait a minute <laughs> and i was like no i am like i am quitting. he's like no i'm tired we're yeah because he didn't really have anything to do with it like mm. at this point we were kind of fresh so i had my businesses he had his mm -hmm. we weren't we didn't have you know we weren't we were dating mm -hmm. um so he didn't, he wasn't obligated to help me or do anything, yeah. but uh, it definitely saved my business because I wanted to be done with Airbnb gotcha. and I was going to be done. I yeah. was going to be done with Airbnb. Okay. So, <laughs> your, so your boyfriend starts, um, the housekeeping business, yep. you end up sticking it out. Yep. Right. What happens next? We, we started growing. Like we started, we, we started getting a solid team. We started acquiring more units. He finally ended up getting into the business. Mm -hmm. Um, Along the way, we end up getting our Sprinter, our Sprinter mm, van. That's what yep. came next. So we got our Sprinter van. Whose idea was that? Uh, he wanted he wanted the party bus. Okay. And then, yeah. <laughs> he said that was him. Yeah, he wanted the bus. <laughs> He's here on set like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so along the way, we started doing the Sprinter business. Okay. And um, then we got our vending machines. So wait, you just, I love how you just rolling over this. Like, we got Sprinter fans and the vending machines, like. <laughs> That's what happened. So is this process like for you, was it just like, okay, I got an idea that I saw on Instagram or some other coach do and now we're just going to try it? Or no. These are all of, everything that we do have been organically us. Mm. I don't, I am very influenced and I, I, I get inspiration on Instagram, but nothing I have done has been like, I've invested into someone's program and now I'm doing this. The only wow. person I invested into was, was that Greg. first one? Mm -hmm. Wow. I've never, I've never, um, Purchase a course. I've never and not. I said it's in no the shade. most humblest way. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. no shade. I just never did that. Yeah. Um. And now and also these courses and stuff are new. Mm -hmm. You know, like this these this courses, whole thing, these, this, this whole wave is new. Yes. yes. Podcast yep. and um subscriptions, all this stuff is new. Courses. We've man. been doing business. Like yeah. this is not new. Yeah. So before you know taking a course was a thing. You had to figure it out. Um, we you wanted to win. That's it. Yeah. So now we are caught in the wave and now we're mentors. You yes. Know? Um, but you've earned that because of the years that you put in. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. But I still got to call you out on like, okay, is yeah, it yeah. really just that easy of, okay, I want a sprinter van. I went and got it. Now it's working because a no. lot of people have advice for new entrepreneurs and they say they yes. say do one thing at a time. But okay. She's snatching up businesses like. No. So let me slow down. In regard to that, I'm telling you how I did it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm hmm. The way that I teach my students is do what you can, mm -hmm. 
don't I am heavy on do not let what people do on social media influence you mm -hmm. to go jump into something. Mm -hmm. Do your research. Yeah. Get the proper mentor. Mm -hmm. Then invest your money. Mm. The people just be jumping into stuff because they see somebody else doing it. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it took for me to get here. Mm -hmm. You don't know what I've been through to to get 30 plus Airbnb to be able to scale to where I am. You don't know what other entrepreneurs go through. And I also tell them that social media could be a facade. Girl, listen, I was just talking to Corey about that. It's a facade. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful with looking up and being inspired. Some people are doing their damn thing. They're they really yeah, they, they got doing receipts, it. They're awesome. But some you people, can tell. Mm -hmm. You and you but you also cannot distinguish between the people that are and the people that are faking. Mm -hmm. The people that are authentic and the people that are capping. Yeah. You really it's hard to distinguish. Yeah. So then you get these people caught up in a course that gets mm -hmm. scammed by they uh, with their money. Yeah. They can't reach out to this person. You can't reach this other person mm -hmm. because you saw somebody do it on Instagram. Yeah. So I, I like to say now, because it's so much cap going on on Instagram, you got to be careful. Yeah. And my my first advice is always to get the proper mentor, mm. even in Airbnb. If it's not me, if you can't afford me, go find a mentor that you can afford. Yeah. I will give you my best judgment on, on any mentor you bring to me that does Airbnb. Mm -hmm. It's money out here for everybody. Wait, let's talk about that. Okay. Because a lot of, and I hate to say it, but a mm -hmm. lot of entrepreneurs don't have that spirit of, collaboration over competition mm. right and i feel like there's a lot of like scammers in it the is. airbnb space it is so how is it that you have this energy about you that like if you can't do it with me like i i admire that in you but not everybody can do that right right so for me like and and i am so humble like humility is always number one on my list mm -hmm. but i don't see I, I don't i'm not in competition with nobody this journey that i was that I'm on was destined for me. Mm -hmm. So nothing that nobody can do in this industry threatens me. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many units you got. I was doing this before Airbnb was really a thing. Yeah. And I really can walk into my units. Mm -hmm. If I say I got 10 units, I can give you keys to all of them. Mm -hmm. I don't cap on Instagram. My, mm -hmm. my page is what it is. Yeah. It's very authentic. So I am not threatened by anybody. No other mentors. 90% of them probably done took a class of mine, took a course Ooh, of mine, are following me, whether they want to admit it or not. Talk your shit, girl. Like, y'all have to see me. I know y'all see me. <laughs> you know, like I say that Yo, in the most of way. way. I'm like, we're really about this life. <laughs> like, I love that. So I'm not threatened by any other Airbnb mentor. And yeah. mo I get a lot of respect in my industry. Mm -hmm. You know, like, but that's because I work hard. Yeah. And I, I show my, my my audience and my followers I really be in the field. Mm -hmm. You can really see me in these units. Yeah, I saw you one time when your store was like, all right, come with me. We're going to go clean some units. Yeah. Was, and you're like, this is how you fold towels. Exactly. I saw a reel. I said, look at Alexia getting on the reels <laughs> now. <laughs> Hold this camera. I'm going to fold this towel real quick. Yeah, like, make you please record me folding these towels. <laughs> Little lady. <laughs> He's in the background like, I did that video. He'd I got like, that video. He's like, you got your camera? Um, You got your mic? I'm like, yeah. like, all right, we're shooting content today. I'd be like, okay, bet. Yeah. I do love that you've been a lot more visual. I think when we first were on Clubhouse and I yeah. met, you were very low key. Very. Right? Like, you didn't even post. You, you had, like, the same default picture. Just yeah. keep it to yourself and, you know, head down, getting your business done. Yeah. And now, like, I've seen your personality grow yes. and you're, you're more open. Thank and you. And just very more transparent. So, I love that about you. Thank you. You're I'm so trying. Welcome. Social media is not, it's never been my thing. I I didn't, I didn't, like my followers are authentic, you mm -hmm. know, and they're organic. So I didn't, I didn't want to be an influencer. I just became an influencer because I'm good at what I do. Yeah. But this is not something that I wanted to do. You yeah. Know? This wasn't the goal. It wasn't the goal. So it was hard for me to like mm -hmm. open up on social media. And I also know that I ain't like, I ain't like everybody else. Like <laughs> I ain't, I'm not like these people, especially we now over here. Everybody's an Airbnb <laughs> mentor now. Like y'all get one little property and now you are Airbnb mentor. Ooh. Like they be killing me. Yikes. I, I, I say what I say. You say what you say. You know what I, I mean? It. But you're not wrong. You're not wrong. No, for real. And I think, I think a lot of it, like entrepreneurship and like life freedom and, yes. and financial freedom is sexy, but to yeah. your point, a lot of people don't know what it really took to get to this point. For real. And some people, for lack of better, you know, awareness, don't yes. understand the the amount of time and energy that you have to put in it. And this shit ain't sweet. Like true. You know, like mm -mm. 30, 30 key, 30 doors that you that mm -hmm. you whether you're renting it or you own it is a lot of responsibility. It is. Right? Yep. Can you share some experiences that you've had with Airbnb that, you know, other than, you know, your housekeeper and your product, your um property managers want to take each other out. But like yeah. In terms of like a business perspective, like, have you been discouraged? Have there been problems where you're like, oh my God, like this is overwhelming. You've had to like figure it out. 
Okay, so then, yes, like there were plenty of times where I wanted to quit. Mm-hmm. Hell, sometimes I still want to quit today. <laughs> she said uh, quit on the right day. I ain't going to lie. Like, I, it's life. Yeah. It's entrepreneurship. Yep. But now, like, I always put God first. Yeah. I put God first in everything that I do. I love that. And God would not build me up to this point to make me quit, mm-hmm. you know? Like, Satan is a, a thing. The and devil he's busy. is a thing. He's always busy. Mm-hmm. And I'm always going to continue to grow because I know that God has my back. Yeah. Along with that, um, I have a, a very, very supportive partner. Mm-hmm. So that also is a really, a really great thing for me. Yeah. Because there's times where I don't feel like getting up. Some mm-hmm. days I am demotivated. Yeah. Some days I don't feel like shooting content. Girl. Some days I don't feel like talking to Airbnb guests. Mm-hmm. Some days I don't want to talk to my property managers. Yeah. Like, that's just what it is. Yeah. So, um, because I have that balance in that backbone, like, a lot of times I don't get up. Yeah. A lot of times I don't shoot content if I don't mm. feel like it. And like, but you keep going. And I keep going. Yeah. I keep going. I love that. So, yeah. Oh, that's my I'm take so on impressed with you. I Thank love you. this. So, so of course, so our podcast, if you didn't know, um, yes. a lot of them are new um, or aspiring entrepreneurs. Okay. Right? When they're just getting started. Yes. So if for people who are like, I'm sick of my job, mm-hmm. you know, the nine to five is a scam. I don't want to work until I'm 60. You Uh-oh. know, do you recommend, like, who do you recommend Airbnb for? I, I recommend Airbnb if you have money saved up. How do not money? take your last. It depends on what city. Okay. How many you're getting. Okay. Um. If you're going luxury or not luxury, like it really just depends on average about, you need to have at least about 20,000 put away. Okay. And that is also for hiccups, Mm -hmm. things that happen, Mm -hmm. you know, um, inventory, Mm -hmm. moving expenses, furniture, Mm -hmm. you know, um, essentials from Amazon, um, different amenities that you might want to put in. Maybe you want to do a thing. Maybe you don't, Mm -hmm. but you also have to account for those months that are not really great months because just like any other business, Airbnb also has its own season. Mm. And if you're a paycheck to paycheck and you just took your last ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars, suppose something happens, like something, anything could happen. Yeah. You know, and you gotta come out of pocket and pay rent. Yeah. You already used your last ten thousand dollars. How are you gonna pay your rent? Mm-hmm. Sure. Now you're working on an eviction. <laughs> and now we got a problem. You know, we have a real serious problem. Yeah, so I never recommend my my students or I never I will never recommend like just getting into the Airbnb industry with your last. Mm. This is not that industry. Anything could happen. Yeah. And once you get into that 12 month lease, you're stuck. Yeah. You're stuck. Yeah. So you either pay or you get evicted. Mm-hmm. You get evicted, it goes on your credit. You 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 got it going on your credit. You can't get other stuff on your credit. Yeah. Now you can't use your credit to leverage other businesses. Like yeah. it's a domino effect. Yeah. So that is what I would say as an entrepreneur. I do not recommend Airbnb, if you're on your last, mm. I did, you can still have a job. That's okay. I yeah. have a lot of clients who have jobs, yeah. nurses, doctors, um, therapists. You know, like I have a lot of, I have, some, I have a client who works at the airport. Mm-hmm. They have money that they take out their 401k. Yeah. You know, they have money that they save. Mm-hmm. But just like, oh, I just got my income tax check. I want to get into Airbnb. Absolutely not. Got you. This is not that industry. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you that it's not. And I appreciate the fact that you have the integrity to say, like, don't do it this way because there's some people who will take a check just because it's offered. Like, True. oh, you're desperate. You want to yeah, you know, no. get multiple streams of income. Yeah, sure. I'll take your last 10000 I'm not doing that. I will I will turn a client away real quick. Like, yeah. before you give me a headache, I will give you your money back. <laughs> you know, like. Uh-uh. Just we're protecting our peace at all costs. At all costs. I but like I, I always like to know the dynamics of people people's finances before they invest with me. Mm-hmm. And even if they can't invest in me, I will show you, I will like show you like what to do. Yeah. Like, Hey, look, uh, maybe you should get a vending machine or, you know, maybe you should, um, you know, get a car and put it on Turo. Yeah. See if you can get this approved on your credit, something like that. Yeah. But I don't, I am not one of those mentors that are like, yeah, bring me your last $10,000. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you, my, my high ticket offer is 17,500. Mm-hmm. So once you pay me, you also have to get your Airbnb. So you gotta you have know, some money saved. You gotta have money saved up. Yeah. So um even for the aspiring entrepreneurs and people that have jobs, mm-hmm. this is just not the industry when it's your last. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is this is not that. It's and rents are going up every day. Girl. The market is crazy. Crazy right now. It's insane. In 2019, 20, the average rent for Atlanta was probably like 1400 1500 mm-hmm. Now, that's for a one-bedroom. Mm-hmm. Our average now is like 2200 2300 for a, a one-bedroom. Yeah, a mortgage is not even that much. Like, be for real. Like, on a <laughs> on a nice house. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's crazy out here. It's cutthroat out here. Like, don't get yeah. caught. 
Yeah. Slippery. At all. Because <laughs> you won't you won't make it. Mm-mm. Um, at this point, right, you've been in business for almost 10 years now. Yes. And that's like an incredible feat. Where are you at from a headspace now? Like, how is this Alexia different than the Alexia who first bought her first property? Honestly, then I was such a kid. I didn't even know nothing. <laughs> Girl, I didn't know nothing. I just was a hustler. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always had that hustler mentality. Like, I don't think that'll ever go away. Yeah. Um, but mentally. hmm I am, a, I'm an adult, you know, I'm a woman of God first and, um, I'm a family girl, you know, like I am really, really big on my peace and I'm really big on like my word being in the Bible. Like I am newly like starting to remember and keeping the Sabbath day. So I love that. Yeah. So Congrats. we are, um, thank you. So we are going to like be going to church every Saturday um, to keep the Sabbath day holy. And that is just what I put in my, that's what I put first in yeah. my life. Yeah. You know, um, but I just try to stay mentally sane because I do do a lot every day mm-hmm. and I do have to like cover a lot of bases. So if I'm not okay, then my businesses are, are not okay. The other question I was going to ask you, um, so I do love that you um, have God in your life. And yeah. I feel like I don't know how entrepreneurs who don't have God in their life make it, Me quite either. frankly, because Lord, I be on that know. prayer mat ready to just let it go. Girl, what? <laughs> I don't know how they... I don't know. I, I don't know how it works, but good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to know, like, you know, as the established entre- entrepreneur that you are now, what are some of the things that you just cannot live without when it comes to keeping your peace as a business owner? Like, are you like an iPad planner? Like, oh no, my reminders though. Your reminders on my iPhone, my reminders. Mm-hmm. Um, meditation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I have to meditate. Okay. How do you um, like to do your meditations? Like in the morning? In the morning, like when I wake up after I'm done praying, like mm-hmm. I'll do my meditation right after. Okay. Um, sometimes I can be in the car, like just driving, and I'll be instead of listening to the radio, mm-hmm. like I'll listen to like meditation or like a, a like podcast YouTube or something oh yeah something mm-hmm. positive something positive okay um what else something i can't live without my laptop i take my laptop everywhere <laughs> are there any like specific apps or things that you use that are really important i don't mm-hmm. i really don't okay. my business is like it's not virtual it's like really in the field mm-hmm. so um i don't have anything you know like mm-hmm. that i must use you know i have um we have a virtual assistant so mm-hmm. she takes care of most of the like virtual stuff computer stuff anyway yeah so i don't really have to like That's be head over heels over stuff over tech stuff okay yeah. so you, are you like is your day-to-day like are you driving around a lot to different properties checking things out or mm-hmm. oh, she said, oh, we don't do mm-hmm. that over here <laughs> my boyfriend will but i ain't doing it <laughs> Like he, get somebody else to do it. Yeah, he bought somebody <laughs> else to do it. No, I I was at some point, like a couple of weeks ago, I was like, you know, in the units because I'm heavy on content now. So mm-hmm. I try to shoot as much content as I can throughout the week. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a content team down in Florida. So okay. I'm held accountable. Like I have to shoot content because I pay these people every yeah. every other week. Because they're going to get their money regardless of whether you get yes. on camera or not. So I have to shoot my content. Mm-hmm. Um but no, like I'm only in the properties most of the time if he needs me or if I need to shoot content, but I don't have to go in them and okay. I have property managers. So, um, I don't have to go in the properties. My day to day is like errands, um, getting, getting like little stuff done for the house, maybe making sure my daughter's okay. Um, now that, now that we're on the restaurant w- uh, wave, making I'm so sure excited. that yes. if, y'all, if y'all have like a grand opening, you have to let me know. so I, can I will. I'm gonna let you know. Yeah. I will let you know for sure. Okay. A lot of new entrepreneurs who are moms have asked me if you have somebody on the podcast who's a mom, yes. right? And especially if their children are young and they're not fully independent yet, please ask them how they manage their time mm. because some of them are single moms. Yes. Some of the audience have written me and said, you know, I'm a single mom. I'm doing this by myself. I just really don't know how I have the time yes. when I don't have parents who can help me. I don't mm. have a partner who can help me, you know, and I have to be, I have to take care of my mental health right. and, my, and my sleep so that I can be here for my child. What, mm-hmm. what advice do you have? to entrepreneurs like that listen if you're a single mom i commend you being a single mom is hard do not let social media influence you to thinking that being a single mom is one number one cool Mm -hmm. or that it's um peaches and cream Mm because it's not yeah if you are a single mom and you're and you're trying to invest to make a better future for you and your child i commend you 100 Mm -hmm. um but as a mom i don't know what i would i would be doing without my support system yeah 
And I don't want to speak in areas where I'm not, where they don't apply to me because I really yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, having a support system is important, but maybe like something that worked for me was getting a nanny. Mm-hmm. So when Amori was, um, when I was in college, I had a nanny. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, like when she got a couple months to where I trusted somebody around her. Yeah. Um, I got a nanny. So mm-hmm. she would fly out with me. Like when I um would needed to go out of town and check on the property. Like mm-hmm. sometimes I would go to Miami with Greg and, and Nikki. She mm-hmm. would come down there with me. Mm-hmm. Um and she was my help. Mm-hmm. If you need help, like find a nanny. I found a nanny on places like Sitter City, uh Cure.com, mm-hmm. Nanny Lane. Mm-hmm. Um, find a nanny. Find find you some help. Like yeah. don't think I think that us as women, we try to, and this is something I've learned and it has, I've learned this with maturity. I've known, Mm -hmm. we try to be these, um, strong single mothers and we forget that men are put on the earth to be here with us, Mm -hmm. regardless if you're single or not, single or not, Mm -hmm. no, regardless of how hurt you are or how heartbroken you may be, you have to heal that trauma Mm -hmm. because that's what they're here for. So something mm-hmm. I've learned is being an alpha female, I am very dominant, mm-hmm. but I also have a dominant male. So at some point, you know, I had to take the back row. Mm-hmm. Although like I'm an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. although I'm a dominant female, mm-hmm. you know, like I had to allow my man to take the lead. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and I was a single mom, so I can speak in that area. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't need nobody to do nothing for me. Mm-hmm. I'm single. I can do this. I make money. Like I don't need no nigga. That was what I, that's the way I felt. Yeah. Until I met somebody that allowed me to think otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel like that mentality really don't get you nowhere. Mm -hmm. We need help. We all need help. And we weren't meant to do it by ourselves. We were not. We we didn't make this baby on our own. Regardless if a dude left you, if he left you heartbroken, if, you know, if he something happened to him and he can't be there for whatever reason, whether it's financial, Mm -hmm. physical, emotional, Mm -hmm. emotionally, like... Mm -hmm. We, we got to figure it out. That's what we do as moms. We yeah, figure stuff out. 100%. So we are not meant to do that alone. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I think that was the most depressing part of my life when I was a single mom, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and it's hard. Like, I don't want them to think that um, being, a, being a single mom is the end, the end goal. Yeah. No, find help. It's yeah. okay for us to have help. Yeah. Who said we had to be super uh, women? Listen, I, I stopped saying I'm an independent black woman. Okay. I stopped saying, I said, no, I'm tired. I'm I tired. Help. I need support. <laughs> Come listen, get this shit. <laughs> listen, I look, I'm like, man, you can go pick up a more because I'm tired. Right. You know, like, I like I have grace. I need you. It, it, it was mm, as strong independent women yes. where we wear as a badge of honor our yes. independence, mm-hmm. right? But one, it kind of strips men of it their does. opportunity, especially men who want to be providers. Exactly. Like, oh shit, well, girl, if you got it, what am I here for? Exactly. Right? Look, he's in the background, like, that's what I'm saying. That's what he told me, though, <laughs> when we first met. That's what he told me. He was like, at that point of time, though, and this is what I mean, like when I say I didn't have a choice, mm-hmm. I had to get up and get it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when I met him, when he came into my life, I was already in a, like a, a distressed place. Yeah. So it was hard for me to pass that torch. Like, you have yeah, to adjust. Yes. And that's hard to do. Because it's hard. It's also because it it's it it com- it could be compromising to your safety if you give it to the wrong person. You're like, Bad. so I'm going to trust this to you and your ass going to drop it, then what? Yes. Now I got to pick you up, pick Hello. this shit up. Like I didn't just work all this way to mm-hmm. get to this point. So it's it's difficult. And, yeah. And honestly, I, I don't know how mothers do it. My mother was a single parent for several years before she got remarried. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know how she did it. As an adult now, yes. I know how much rent is. Yes. And, food, and I'm like, child, yes. how? You remember your mom used to be like, stay a kid as long as you can? Yeah. And I was like, girl, whatever. I want to get these done. I want to get grown. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be grown. Mom, was right. You know? So the last question I was going to say is you did a really excellent job of like saving money. And I think that that's something that you've shared multiple times in the episode here and in other podcast episodes, like mm-hmm. to be a good steward of your money. Yes. Right. Um, for entrepreneurs who are looking to get started in business, like what advice do you have on trying to save money when things are tight? Oh, girl, let me be honest. I ain't the best for saving money. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> listen, I am transparent. I, pre- I appreciate it. I am it. not about to cap to these people. Okay. I'm not about to lie to them. Okay. Maybe you want to ask me another question because I'm not good with So wait, how did you get the <laughs> <laughs> So wait, how did you get the twenty thousand when you first started? It, you no, I'm that? talking about now, like Oh. I didn't have a choice then, but now I got a boyfriend, so I don't <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm serious. I don't be care about saving no money. I mean, that's oh no wrong. Gosh. That's not the right question for okay. me. Okay, so then for, ask me something. Okay, 
for entrepreneurs, I don't give a damn. <laughs> okay, so for entrepreneurs who need finances, she said, uh, uh-uh, uh, next question. Yeah, she said, try something else. Because okay. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Like, I spend money like a drug dealer, like, mm-hmm. girl, like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> we gonna pray on it. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. You trying? At least you're aware of it and you're honest about it. I make money, so like, I don't like. It's hard for me to. I don't have like a financial goal. If I want something, I'm gonna go do it. Mm-hmm. Like when we want to do something, we gonna figure it out. We are gonna go do it. Yeah. So like we don't be like, okay, we gotta save up ten thousand dollars in three months. Are you to investing? Make sure. Oh, we invest all the time. We about to go okay. get a new truck tomorrow. Okay, okay. I really appreciate you being so transparent of in the course. interview today and sharing mm-hmm. with us, you mm-hmm. know, more about your heart and things that have, you know, been difficult for you. Postpartum yeah. is no joke. It's right? not a joke. Um, struggling as a single mother is no joke. Um, and so I just really admire you and I appreciate you for making time and also supporting the black business because we would not be here without you. Of course. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Is there anything that any last words you want to share with the audience? Um, I would just say stay consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, that is my main key when it comes to being an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. or being, being successful in life, even Mm -hmm. if you work a job. Yeah. Just stay consistent with whatever, with whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um, set goals Mm -hmm. and accomplish them. Yeah. You know, don't let them fall by the wayside. We're, I think a lot of people are like taking courses now. You know, they're taking these classes and these webinars. When you guys are getting this information, mm-hmm. something that I say is get the education and execute on the education. Yeah. Don't let your notebooks collect dust. Mm-hmm. Don't let it sit in your notes. Like, action how is on it? it? Have action and, and follow through. Mm-hmm. And, um, you do things at your own pace. Do things when you want to do them. Mm-hmm. Have grace with yourself. Mm-hmm. And do not let what social media, what's happening on social media, make you feel like you're not doing enough. That is something that I feel like a lot of people that I talk to, a lot of people that DM me, they're feeling like they're not doing enough because what they see other people doing. Mm-hmm. When it's easy to, you know, go find a Lamborghini and take a picture in front of it, mm-hmm. you might not even know the owner. Yeah. But you might convince 100,000 people that this is your car. That's your car, yeah. It's easy to post a stack of money that it's $100,000. It might be, um, it might be all ones, mm-hmm. you know? Like, or, or you, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's easy to put up a facade. So do not let what's going on on social media um, make you feel like you're not doing enough. Mm-hmm. Like everybody, everybody got their own journey. Mm-hmm. Where somebody at in their life, it might be for them. Yeah. You don't know what they went through to get there. That's true. It might just be their time. But I almost, like, I can almost certainly say, like, if you keep God first and you believe and you, and you set your goals and you do what you need to do to achieve them, you will. I love that. Yeah. Mic drop. We ain't got nothing else to say. Y'all, <laughs> go follow her. Drop all your handles so they know how to check in with you and, and support you. Yes, you guys can follow me on Instagram at underscore Alexia Wright. I am also on Facebook at um, Alexia Wright. And I'm also on TikTok at Alexia Wright. Period. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. We appreciate you. Thank of you to course. the family. Thank you. Um, but yeah, we'll check you out next time. Thank, thank you. Thank you, FN. You're welcome.